Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have one of the legends of technology and business, Nolan Bushnell. Nolan founded both Atari and Chuck E. Cheese Pizza. He's been inducted into the Video Game Hall of Fame and was named one of Newsweek's 50 Men Who Changed America. He started more than 20 companies and is one of the founding fathers of the video game industry. His latest venture is called Brain Rush that uses video game technology that incorporates real brain science. He hired Steve Jobs back in the Atari days and is the author of Finding the Next Steve Jobs, How to Find, Keep, and Nurture Talent. Nolan, thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Good fun to be here. So, you know, Nolan, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask about the lowest point and how you got through those tough times because people just see you now after you know being the father of video games atari chuck e cheese it, it wasn't always an easy journey what was the lowest point and then how you pushed through i think the lowest point was when i was um i did some personal guarantees and i uh, was basically underwater financially uh and uh and I ended up having to sell the Woodside house and I had all these kids and everything. And, scary. Uh, and I, uh, you know, I wasn't destitute, but it was, a, it, but it was a thing where I, the kids were, you know, between four and, and 20. And, uh, and I, I was concerned about their lives actually more than mine. Because, yeah. uh, you know, going from living in this 16,000 square foot mansion with a water slide and, uh, you know, a lot of goodies to a rental in Palo Alto wasn't going to work. Right. And so I decided I was going to take everybody on the long awaited trip to Europe for a year. And we could do it very cheaply because I had friends all over the world that had always said, oh, come, come and stay. And so we. We spent uh, four months in London and a month in, in Scandinavia. Now, that doesn't sound like a low point. <laughs> but just before that, before yeah. we made that decision, it was pretty, it was yeah. pretty bleak. The year yeah. before was really bad because we were struggling and, you know, we, the house went into foreclosure a couple of times and, you know, that was bleak. That is scary, yeah. But, you know, I hate to say this, but it's, it, was, it was all an illusion. We didn't re we did we, we thought we had problems, but we the family was healthy, we were all together, yeah. you know. Uh the and, and and the Woodside house in the broad scheme of things didn't matter. Right. You know? Yeah. And 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 so so I think a lot of times you just have to get your head wrapped around what, what are the important things in life and what yeah. are the non important yeah. things. Just having your kids safe and healthy was the what you yeah. focused on it was important yeah yeah and then on the flip side of that Nolan, what's been the proudest moment one of the proudest moments oh wow that's a real hard one i i don't know i you could choose a few what you could choose a few if there's not just one i you know it's actually not the way my brain works like I can think about what will be my proudest moment when I do certain things and you know my goals, but the stuff that I've accomplished is kind of okay. Yeah, done that, done mm -hmm. that. You know, I, I really we'll enjoy do both of those. What was one um, accomplishment you had that you were you had that goal and you had it set and you finally hit it? And then what's the next? The I won next the goal? transpac in 1983. What was that? I won the transpac. I it was ah. the it was the it was a you know, a sailing race, uh, San, uh, Los Angeles to Hawaii. And, uh, and I, and I won that puppy. And two years before I went on the race just kind of as a participant. And then, uh, and then I, then I, when I was out in the middle of the Pacific, I said, you know, in two years, I'm going to win this puppy. Yeah. And I did. <laughs> Any business related ones that you had your sights set on? Well, hitting uh, hitting two hundred and fifty Chuck E. Cheeses was one. Yeah. Um, you know, selling. You know, 
gosh, I don't know. Yeah. What, I, what's I, next? You said you have you have big goals still. Oh, I I really want to positively change education. I yeah. think that our education is totally mismatched with today's technology. Yeah. I mean, our kids are so much brighter. They have so much more multitasking ability. Batch processed. The classroom should be abolished. There should be no classes. There should be no... The concept of grades is wrong. There should be no grades and no grades. People should enter school, travel at their own speed, focus on their own interests, and and quit when they want to, to get a job, <laughs> yeah. you know, or, or move into apprenticeships. And it should be, there shouldn't be this broad link between somebody who's in school and somebody yeah. who's working because yeah. we need to be lifelong learners right. as well. And so I think life needs to be more of an amalgam of, of the educational yeah. self and, and that. And, yeah. and, and I believe that there's so many ways you can learn that you don't want to have it be um, so stilted and, yeah. and pedantic. Yeah, I like that. And for for someone with kids, anyone with kids, where should someone start? You know, because they are in this system. Where should where should someone start with that? I know, and, and you know, and it's hard. Um, Besides I've brain been, rush, where else? Yeah, yeah. brain rush and, yeah. and and a lot of the other stuff. What? Um, but, you know, so the, the biggest thing, there are hours and hours and hours of boredom in a classroom because, you know, lecture is just the wrong way to, do, to, to give information. Right, yeah. And, and what, what is being crushed is enthusiasm for learning. Yeah. You know, kids don't know the difference between learning and school. They think they're the same. No, they're not. School is boring. Learning is fun. Right. <laughs> and and, uh, and you really want to have these other constructs developed. I mean, creativity. If you look at all the statistics, we're training creativity out of yeah. people. Right. Um, and, uh, and it's just... Uh, anyway, I could go on and yeah. on. It's a puppy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, that's why I'm wondering where someone, someone should start. Like... So you have kids that are just entering school or they're already in school. Where, where should people start? Because they're in the system. So how do you get them on track? I would be less worried about the system in some ways. I took the kids out of school when we went to Europe. Yeah. Homeschool. Yeah. And you know, using the museums around the world as sort of a background. Yeah. You know. What better way to learn about World War One and World War Two than the British War Museum? Right. What better way to learn about physics than going through the the Science and Industry Museum? Sure. And uh, yeah, you know what better? What, I mean, and some of the the museums and that in uh, in Scandinavia and yeah. in Germany. Yeah. So, um, just being, you know. It, on the location of the Battle of the Bulge yeah. and talking about what was happening. And they were coming over this ridge. And <laughs> you could really visualize that, yeah. You can visualize it. And, and so it becomes contextual learning, which is always better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that, uh, I think that take, my kids have all been very, well, I was willing. I've, I've been willing to take the kids out of school at the drop of a hat. Like I would always take one of the kids with me on on my business trips, you know. And, and when they were twelve, they'd get to come to Europe with me because, you know, sometimes they'd have to stay in the hotel. But most of the time, I'd take them right to the business trips. Yeah. You know, sit sit in the negotiations and that. And uh, I know that one time I was taking the kids to one of my boys to Japan with me. And uh, and they didn't know quite what to think about it. They thought that, that maybe he spoke 
Japanese and was a spy or something like that. And I said, no, I just want him to know what's going on, yeah. you know, what, what my life is. Yeah. And, uh, and so that was, uh, that was kind of a, uh, uh, my attitude is that if there's something more interesting going on in the school, let's go do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate it. I know you have another appointment to get to where should we pe- point people towards and what are some, what's a, some final words we should leave them with? Brainrush.com, yeah. NolanBushnell.com, yeah. uh, my brain, my my website. At Nolan Bushnell is my Twitter, yeah. and uh, and I um, I don't Twitter as much as I should, but I do when I think I have something to say. Yeah. And um, and if you're seeing this from Australia, I'm going to be in uh, in Australia giving a speech uh, at the end of next month. Uh, I'm going to be in Norway a uh, week before that, giving a speech, and uh, up in Trondheim. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm, I'm building some really good s- stuff, and you'll be able to download some new apps that will be fun to play as well yeah. as very learning. Yeah. Any final words, what people should uh, get out of this? I know I love the ending of your book when you talk about what you told Steve Jobs when he was asking about Pixar. Yeah, just do it. Just <laughs> action. Yeah, act. just act. Just act. Yeah. It's it's a little bit like Nike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um change your life. Do different things. Mix it up. Um every time I try something new and different, it engages me in a very powerful way. Yeah. And it turns out that there's some good brain science behind that. And plus, when you do different things, you create new dendrites and build your brain. You'll actually get smarter. Yeah. Nolan, thank you. I really appreciate it. Fantastic. Good fun. Awesome. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.